Hey y'all. Is he Willie Dean here? Still got my glass. Need to go. I'll learn back for a third video. Actually, this might end up being my first. I'm thinking I might delete the first couple. <clears throat> first one I found out doing a little research. I was doing way too much cussing on. Wah. Freaking hurt somebody's butt or something. I don't know. So I'm waiting to see what happens with the first video. It might get kicked off. I don't know. I don't want my, I don't want a brand new channel. I'm just trying to get started to get locked up or banned or some crap. So I don't know yet if I'm just going to delete that or what. So I got me a little nicer, apparently. Makes sense. I thought about it. It's like, well, I don't really see people cussing on YouTube, so kind of makes sense. Alley children. I ain't going to put 18 and above because that's annoying as hell. There's a many a video I wanted to see. And I didn't feel like logging in and prove I'm over 18 to watch the video. So I just skipped over it. I don't want everybody skipping over me. <laughs> so, anyway. I am just took me a shower. I'm cleaned up, ready to go. So I'm setting up and trying another video out. I don't know if really seen me yet. I'm making videos faster than anybody's even seeing them, but I don't care. There's little short, like, vlogs, I guess you call them, video vlogs or whatever. Or vlog, I don't know what the vlog stands for, but I just get on here and ramble and talk about myself. And past adventures and this and that. If it's still on here in my last video, I was talking a little bit about my background. I was skipping over a lot of stuff. That's the thing. I'm trying to figure out how to even do this. Like if I do it more like a documentary type thing, holy cow, man. I will just keep numbering them and this will go on forever. It'll be like a very long book. <laughs> <laughs> but be narrated, narrated by me I mean hell maybe I'm creating a brand new thing here friggin autobiographies on YouTube I don't know people can just follow along and keep listening to my story and of course hell is fucking YouTube you just sit and binge watch it when you can and then I don't know I was thinking about it the other day, it's like, well, hell, I'm kind of breaking new ground here. There ain't nobody doing this that I've seen. Everybody's too go, go, go. They only got damn time or patience to sit and watch a video. I've been hearing all this crap. I, I got to edit my video. I can't waste time. I got to use different camera angles to keep attention and all this shit. I. I I'm sitting in my fucking house in my damn chair. This ain't a damn Universal Studios or something. I'm not trying to do professional film shit from my fucking living room. What the hell is wrong with people nowadays? Going out and buying thousands of dollars of equipment and cameras and bullshit and they all think they're the next fucking... Having a brain fart. But the next big fucking director, that's what I'm trying to think of. Like, they're the next fucking George Lucas or something sitting in their living room. It's like, no, fuck that. I'm going to get on here. I'm going to just shoot a fucking video. Motherfuckers, fan me. Watch me or don't. But don't not watch me because I don't have professional equipment and I'm not professionally shooting this. That's stupid. I just got some crap to ramble about. If you want to listen, cool. Anyway, I just think that's crazy. I was thinking about that too the other day. 
Who in the hell was fucking... Why the hell, I should say, would you be trying to have a professional studio in your house? At your house. I get it. Some of these people are making hundreds of thousands of dollars and stuff. That's cool. Yeah, if I build up that big, I got money rolling in. I've got over 100000 a month coming in. Yeah, I can afford to get a setup going and all that, but... I hope people don't just blow me off because I don't have all that right now when I'm barely getting this going. Come on now, give me a freaking break. <laughs> ah, that's just craziness. It's such a fickle, fast-paced society nowadays. It's just kind of sad. I think that's looking decent to me, but I don't know. I grew up through the 70s with rabbit ear antennas and dialing in the snow. Some of y'all might know what I'm talking about, but to go from snow just from the picture on this phone, that this is like high def NASA shit to me compared to what I grew up watching TV. I just... That's what people are used to. Every generation has different things. I get it. One thing I do like, I like old cars. Give me an old 50s coupe or something like that. Shit. I'll take that any day if there's garbage they're building nowadays. Give me that old school. And keep your fifty, sixty thousand dollar jacked up stupid ass truck. Just give me a friggin' old coupe and shit. Back in the day that cost fifteen hundred brand new shit. I'll take one of those in a heartbeat of rest garbage. Them old cars are heavy as shit and built like tanks. No seat belts. <laughs> The new seatbelt thing, I do admit, kind of sucks. I've been thrown in the floorboard a couple of times when I was a kid. And <laughs> it's not fun. It wasn't scary. I didn't give a shit, but... No, nah, it's not fun. Seatbelt's are a good thing. But, I got my own story about that now. I'm going to get into seatbelt laws. I would be dead right now if I'd been wearing a seatbelt. So, I think... That should be my choice. I don't give a shit if it's a law or not. I shouldn't be dead right now because I obeyed the law and had my seatbelt on. Which, don't get me wrong, I normally wear my seatbelt. But this was back when I was younger. I was just like 19, 20. I was teenager-ish. And my dad was showing me this old car from somebody who worked a little. They bought it brand new, had been taken care of, it was a nice car. She sold it to another teenager, trying to help him out. And the guy was a typical teenager. He gutted the front of the car and put speakers in it and some bucket seats that were cooler than the old bench seats because it was a 70. The old 70 cutlass two door 350 heck yeah 350 engine and positive rear end and it was a cool car no it was a four door it wasn't a two door I remember that it was a four door old but anyway when he cut out the bench seats and stuff and put in bucket seat he cut out the seat belts too and didn't replace them so I couldn't put my seat belt on if I wanted to so anyway I just got a job recently and I was <laughs> out in the freaking sun in these little booths like little homemade booths that was built outdoors in the sun and 
sandblasting pants. It's like hotter and shit. I didn't have water and stuff to drink or anything. I just went straight there that morning going to work. And then when I was leaving, I look one way. It's clear. I can see down the road and around the corner. I was clear for probably a half mile. I can see. I look back the other way and I can see a couple of cars are coming up the road about a mile away. So I start pulling out and I'm watching them. I'm pacing off them coming up the road. Like make sure I pull out fast enough and get in front of them. So here I am. I'm pulling out. I'm looking. I'm looking. And now I gotta look to the left so I don't just drive off the road or anything so I can see the road as I'm pulling all out. But anyway, I would start pulling out in the road and then when I go to turn back the other way, as soon as I turn my head back, just that fast from the time it took me to just be at the stop sign to just one car length out in the road, I just see out the corner of my eyes I'm turning my head back around a minivan like one foot from me and all I could think of to do was I just jerked on the wheel and stomped the gas pedal through the floor I just stomped the gas as hard as I could pulling on the steel <laughs> it was just like a moment of panic or something like that was all I could think of to do seeing a minivan right in front of my face so I just tried to shove the gas pedal through the floorboard, just pulled on the steering wheel and stood on the gas pedal. And in my mind, I was thinking maybe I could shoot across the road and they would go on by me, even though they were right there. That was impossible. But it did work. That's the only thing that saved my life. So because I floored it and was going forward, like I said, this is a 350 Posi Track Oldsmobile, 1970 Oldsmobile. That thing was built like a tank. And that power out the ass. It melt the tires. <clears throat> and the guy before me had already put wider tires, like 60s, more like, you know, sportier drag traction tires on it. So I floor it, and this woman hits me. And you got to kind of picture this. I'm trying to pull out, so I'm trying to go up in this way, right? And this woman hits me, and because I, the car had so much power and I just floored it, I jerked her forward as she hit me. So we, she drives me down the road initially. I'm going down the road and turning And then she goes on down the road, turning, and she ends up, we're both facing the wrong way. I'm like, I gotta be 50 feet from the stop sign from the intersection. She drove me down the road and spun me off the road. And then she spun on down the road and behind me, she was like another 20, 30 feet behind me. That's how hard this bitch hit me. <laughs> and I came to, I just feel the car lurching. It's just like, boom, boom, boom. It was slow motion. Everything I'm coming to, I feel the car moving. And my first thought's like, oh shit, I'm going to get hit again. And I reach for the steering wheel. And it's just like, oh man, this ain't good. Because all I see is this hand. If you look, if this camera is worth the shit, you can see the scar at my wrist right here. I've got a metal plate in this wrist. Because it just shattered. I shattered this inside bone in my wrist below my thumb. It just shattered. And when I reach for the steering wheel, like I go like this, I'm reaching for the steering wheel, and all I see is the top of my hand is coming 